Hi everyone. Um, some of you will know that um, for quite a long time I've been uh, looking at uh, getting back on to top band uh, from my home QTH uh, since I stopped using my second um, station set up in Abingdon uh, where I was able to uh, match my G5 RV to 160 meters using a very long length of RG58 coax. Uh, not the case here uh, in, uh, in Ensham. And I've been, well, I've been doing a lot of research and quite scarily, uh, you know, some of the antennas that I've been looking at, like a Delta Loop or Sky Loop, you know, full wave Sky Loop, you're talking about 160 meters of wire, a lot of height, you know, 40 or 50 feet, and, um, you know, a lot of grounding, and the whole thing basically just looked complex. It was going to take up a lot of space, it was going to be a lot of effort, and, um, you know, it just, I sort of almost gave up on it, but uh, I was talking to a couple of the guys from Harwell Amateur Radio Society, and uh, you know they basically just said, "Well, why don't you just throw up a quarter wave wire and see what happens?" So, um, so that's what I've done, and um, with a few modifications, um, I've basically built an antenna, a transmitting antenna for top band 160 meters that has cost me four pounds fifty and actually works. And uh, this video is just to give you guys a bit more detail on what I've actually done. And I'll show you uh, some of the results, which are pretty surprising. Now, you can see here the antenna basically supported. It runs along the bottom of the garden, um, about five feet above the fence, six feet above the fence. I would say it's probably sort of somewhere between 12 and 15 feet up in the air along the bottom of the garden to that post there. And then it runs kind of across the garden to um, a rod there which is in the middle of the lawn and then from there it then runs up to and passes through a bedroom window to give it a bit of height now bearing in mind that i'm sort of not really following any of the kind of um, uh, accepted sort of procedure for installing um, a transmitting antenna so basically it's a piece of wire and uh, that is 36 about 36.5 meters in total length um the, the route is slightly convoluted as you can see it runs along the bottom of the garden and then comes across uh into uh across the lawn and then up to the house and then down and um anyway 100 and, uh, sorry 36.5 meters is about a quarter wave taking the velocity factor into consideration for uh top band and so and that's basically it and this piece of wire enters the shack passes through the door or through the door frame and it terminates in the back of my mfj 949e matching unit in a there you go there's a it's basically just a banana plug into the uh socket on the back of the mfj which is a line wire socket there's actually three sockets there's a balanced line wire and a line wire um, and as you can see right now, I'm transmitting uh, on FT8 top band with 50 watts and we'll just let it run through again. But you can see that the uh, SWR is, um, is perfect. So it, match, it matches perfectly, but that doesn't actually mean anything. And I'll actually, I, I can show you the match actually, because um, I've got my uh, uh, antenna analyzer. So there you go. So we're now transmitting again, uh, 50 watts, and you can see my SWR it's not going to move i don't think it's basically perfect but that doesn't necessarily mean an efficient antenna of course that just means that it's you know you can match a rusty nail but it won't help you in terms of you know making contacts and dx etc so let me just i'm just going to stop transmitting and then i'm going to just while i'm here i may as well demonstrate the match um, so just bear with me a second i plug it into my analyzer So um, let's just give this a little adjustment. So there you go. Perfect match. Now this just goes to show that the difference in what is a match on my antenna analyzer versus a match on the uh, needle on my MFJ. Um, uh, but uh, there you go. Perfect match.
Right, so let me just put that back. So, um, yeah, as I said, it, it matches perfectly, that, but that doesn't necessarily mean it is um, a very efficient antenna. It's almost certainly not a very efficient antenna for various reasons. One, it's a quarter wave, um, which, you know, it's fine, um, but uh, um, it's only approximately a quarter wave because you, you do have to take the velocity factor into account. Um, and uh, so it's not it's not perfectly it's not exactly a quarter wave um, and the root of the antenna is is a bit convoluted it's not a straight piece of wire which would be probably the the most efficient way by changing the by, by changing the direction of the wire um, several times um, that will obviously that will affect the impedance and that in itself will so there you go I'm just there we go, back to perfect match. That will affect the um, uh, how well it does or doesn't match. Well, what it means is is that um, if it if the if the impedance is way off 50, then the matching unit has to work very hard um, to actually match it. And what I found is that um, when I first set this up, um, if I used above about 30 watts, um, the, the uh, there was arcing in the matching unit, which basically indicates the matching unit was having to work very very hard to present 50 ohms to the radio. Since I put extra radials in, that's not the case, um, and that um, I can use 50 watts and there's no problem at all. But um, anyway, this, as I said, this entire antenna cost me four pounds fifty um, because I had wire lying around, um, and what I paid four pound fifty for from Screwfix was a four foot um, earth rod. So one side of the antenna I've described to you, it's 36 meters of wire. The other side of the antenna is is the is the earth. Now this white cable. Is clamped to the earth rod and the other end of the white cable is um, attached to the earth terminal on the back of the mfj which i'll show you and then we've got 25 ground radials which are buried under the grass to make it a bit tidier in batches of five and then there are three quarter wave um, ground radials there's this one here that basically runs in a u-shape around the garden and then there's uh, the red wire here which basically runs in a straight line um, down the side of the house in 36 meters in that direction. I'm lucky that I've also got a lot of uh, I've got a lot of space outside the front of the house and then there's a third quarter wave radial which is perpendicular to those two that essentially runs along the patio across the garden and then up the other side of the house because there's also a pathway on the other side of the house. So in total 28 radials 25 of them are five meters in length and then there are three quarter wave radials and all that is attached to the back of the mfj using this earth wire here so uh, and i'll show you that everything passes through the door frame um i'm not the sort of ham that drills a lot of holes in the side of his house and so um if you look here you can see that that's the other side of the antenna so that's the earth wire uh, attached to the earth point on the back of the um, matching unit and you can see here we're now transmitting again i'm just going to adjust the match again and we don't have any problem using 50 watts now on fta um, with these extra radials so that's basically the antenna and so the four pound 50 uh, i spent on the earth rod and the clamp that came with it the wire and bits of stick and post and pole and wooden baton were just lying around um, uh, that, I, that, I, that I already had here and so literally for £4.50 I've built myself a transmitting antenna um, that works on uh, on top band which is I think is quite amazing really. Um, I've been transmitting on for about 10 or 15 minutes and um, but the band at this time of day obviously is pretty dead um, but what I've got here is um, a couple of nights ago while we were doing the um, Harwell sort of Zoom meeting, coffee evening meeting, I started uh, transmitting on top band. And you can see here that my signal was decoded all across sort of Northern Europe, Central Europe, into Russia. And then uh, here you can see in Indonesia, um, right on the gray line, I was decoded and um, 11,795 kilometers distant by Yankee Bravo 1 uh, Tango Juliet. So there you go. And this, I took this screenshot about 
20 minutes, half an hour after it actually happened, where you can see here, 30 minutes, half an hour later. So um, when, uh, when this contact was made, when this guy decoded my signal, it, he was right on the gray line. So, uh, so there you go. So um, yeah, this antenna um, actually works. And um, yeah, it's only sort of 15 feet above the ground and it only costs four pounds 50 and basically constructed of, um, of, of sort of junk that I had lying around. But it just goes to prove that um, uh, with a little bit of ingenuity and a bit of effort, it is possible to build an antenna for top band that works and uh, doesn't cost a fortune and that doesn't take up huge amounts of space uh, and it doesn't require a huge amount of effort to uh, to get this thing actually installed so uh, so there you go so uh, i'm really happy with that um and i just thought that i would share that with you because i you know um i, I felt quite inspired talking to those two guys from harwell amateur radio society um to do this um you know and it was basically on a you know on a best effort basis well you know throw up quarter wave of wire and put a, a you know a, on one side earth the other side of it put some radials in if you can and see what happens and um you know i've been copied i've done some voice calls on it and been copied five and nine and five and nine plus twenty by some of the guys from harwell that i talk to regularly on this on the friday night sked so um it, it works it works i must say very well considering um how you know the the components that I've used to build it, and uh, how short it is, and how close it is, relatively speaking, to the ground. So, uh, so there you go. Um, it's not the prettiest construction in the world, for sure, but um, and it doesn't sort of follow the sort of general, the sort of principles of sort of you know efficient antenna design. But sometimes you know if you're limited uh, to space and cost, etc., uh, it's just worth experimenting. And uh, and so I'm really happy with it. So there you go. My £4.50 top band transmitting antenna. Uh, that's all the details. Any questions, obviously, leave me a comment on the, uh, on, on the channel and um, I'll be glad to help you guys out. But uh, for now, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was useful. Thanks for watching.